What's up amigos, today we're going to cover how to play Nubutama, specifically with Shurunui and Hanzo. These two are the more often popular variants. I'll cover some plays, key cards, and some advice for you to get started in this clan and have fun. So let's get right into it. Starting off with Shurunui. So Shurunui is a crest deck in standard and it takes advantage of a mechanic called domination. Domination is a skill that you're able to take your opponent's rear guards or even their vanguard and attack their units. It's almost like getting extra attacks, but without using your cards. Cards like Oboro and the Crest will give power-ups to those dominated rearguards when they are attacking the vanguard. So that way, your opponent has to guard against it and is a way to get cards out of their hand or even deal with damage. Also, some key things about dominating vanguards too. Typically, you'll be dominating grade threes with twin drive. So you'll be doing twin drive with the cards coming from your deck. However, if you're going against a deck like Seraph, vanguards like that have an inherent triple drive. So you may be asking yourself, when can I dominate? It really starts beginning when you start to stride it. When you place a stride like Magan Tembu, it triggers the Oboros Brick Stride skill to immediately dominate something on your opponent's side. Then you can use strides like Magan Tembu to use a Counter Blast to dominate again, and you can take advantage of the same rear guard that you use for Oboro, and then it retires at the end of the battle. The next powerful stride that we have in standard is the Mukuro. Mukuro requires a Demon Style Shirinuri discard, and you can set up your formation, typically a Restander, and then you can dominate your opponent's rearguard and then vanguard. And when you perform the drive checks, you can stack triggers onto your rearguards as well. This is very good on a restander because you get twice the benefit. Then set up the field and since it happens during the main phase, you can do dig deeper into your deck for potential more combo pieces to make your turn even better. So you can call those cards before you enter your actual battle phase. Then you attack typically with your rearguards, then your vanguard, and then restand any restanders that you have and apply triggers at that point too. This typically gets a lot of attacks out of the way, leaving your opponent in a difficult situation to guard and also take damage. Some key cards to highlight, I wanna highlight Furai and Sekai. These are both our restandard grade twos, and these are great because they also gain power, and Sekai can also draw us more cards later on as well. Definitely recommend playing a playset of each. Other cards worth noting is the grade two Shoujo Doji. This is often played in the right line. So that way you're able to so charge, but also potentially call rearguard for an extra better early game. To have somewhat of an early game because the deck is stride based. So it has one of its weaknesses that its early game is not that great. You also have access to a, a lot of grade one soul chargers as well. Cards like Forktail and Whiposaurus and many others. So adjust accordingly to your deck build. Other grade threes to worth consider is the Asperiata and the Peeling Dragon. Esperietta is also a restandard in the similar as the Great Twos. The one pro about this card is that it doesn't require your opponent to see, it doesn't require you to have a dominated attack go through. Both Furai and Sekai require a dominated attack to even do their restanding skills. So if your opponent plays it well where they, they prevent you from dominating that turn, those cards are useless. And so that's why a card like Esperietta is definitely worth considering. The Peeling Dragon is there so for helpful for retirement, but also discarding and drawing from its effects too and also potential shield value depending on how your setup is. I do want to mention a promo code Shinryu. And so this card is great because when it boosts, if your opponent has one or less rear guards or you played an order this turn, this unit gets 5k and on the end of the battle, it could put itself into salt and you draw a card. So there's a lot of advantage there in terms of hand advantage and also generating a soul for your restanders. Going into the premium format, we have access to even more strides. One of the key ones is the history collection errata, Gera Sururakan which can give you also two protects, but also just stride regardless of your opponent's grade. So if you're going first, your opponent's still a grade two, you can just perform stride because of its skill. You can attack accordingly, also pair up with the restanders too, because you technically have the Shurinori name as well because of the heart, and they'll discard a card as well because of the history collection skill. One of our powerhouse strides is the Rinse Stride. It's GB3, allows all dominated attacks get an additional 10K and critical. While having an axe skill where you can counter blast, your opponent calls two cards from their hand, they get 5k and attack your vanguard and they attack the opponent's vanguard one by one at a time. In combination with the crest and any other power ups like the GB3 or cyclones, this can scale up easily while ripping cards from your opponent's hand. It's a very hard stride to deal with. Oftentimes, opponents try to build up a massive hand to deal with it or have G guard plays or use order type cards or even protect markers to fizzle that call. So be wary of that. Other key cards that I want to mention in premium is Ungai and Sengenki. So both of them are very useful because Ungai is essentially able to reset your opponent's vanguard back to an 11k number. So this is good against OTs that are checked defensively or even just triggers in general. And you could also mix the numbers on your rearguards to make them 11k boosters or attackers. And then later on with like the crest power up or even triggers, they can get power from there as well. Sengeki is used there for consistency reasons. If you're playing the crest support too, this is another way to increase 
the chances of you writing the grade one that gives the crest to begin with, but it also just gives you access to the rest of your deck that is grade two or less, especially the Shoto Doji grade two. It's on attack boosted skill, also rips a card from your opponent's hand if they have four or more. This can be vital in key moments or just over time, just ripping a card turn after turn if manageable. Two other cards that are worth mentioning are Jaku Meisu, the Stride, and also Nyami Shibuki, the Great Two. And so they go hand in hand. And essentially, Jaku Meisu is able to retire two Great Zeros, bounce everything, draw two cards, and call two. And if you did call two, it gets plus 10k and a critical. This is all for free, essentially, and you flip something in the G zone. It's a good first stride and also mid game stride, depending on your CB and your field setup. And yeah, Mishibuki is the one that sets up with tokens a lot easier. You could technically use grade zeros in general, but you want to use tokens because they're the least value to you compared to like triggers in hand. You could also use the tokens defensively too by intercepting from the back row, which gets around certain guard restrictions from hand since it's intercepting from the back row. Going into Hanzo, so in V Premium, Hanzo specialized in multi-attack with the Tasogata Hanzo coming out of Seoul by retiring grade zeros from your field, typically tokens as well. This makes it a different way to do multi-attack since their attacks are coming from the soul and you don't have to worry as much depending on some disruption play, but it is susceptible to some disruptive plays. It's just a different way to multi-attack essentially. You're going to rely on token generators as well and soul chargers because you need to soul charge essentially the grade three Tasagare Anzos, or you could also just rewrite them over time as well and they end up in your soul that way too. So there's a balance of using these token generators and also cards that soul charge where applicable. Going into the premium format, you have access to a little more options too. Some of the overdressed cards such as Forktail and the Shoujo Doji Grade 2. And as you can see, when you write the Grade 2, you can check the top five, soul charge with Tasagare Hanzo, but you can also call other cards such as the Forktail, which can also dig deeper seven more cards to also soul charge another Tasagare Hanzo. So the consistency of the Hanzo deck goes up significantly in premium. There's also some synergy with the Jaku Meisu Stride, and it's interesting with the grade one token generator that's able to generate tokens when it's bounds. And essentially, because of the timings before that card even existed, Jaku Meisu did not play nicely with the Hanzos because if they were to come out, they essentially would have been bounced to hand. But because of the timing, you're able to bounce everything else. Those skills go into standby, resolve the token generator, and then two of the Hanzos can come out now and still be able to perform more attacks after your Vanguard attack. This can help increase the significantly the amount of attacks that you do on this strike turn and can put your opponent in a pickle. There's also some domination strike synergy with it. So you can use still like Rin and other cards that perform dominate effects. Again, it just requires that the Hanzo to be the Vanguard, which counts the heart as well. So you can still have an extension of attacks that way with domination. Quickly, other strikes and G-Guards that I want to mention is Sukumorgan. This card is able to counterblast two and make your opponent choose four cards and bind the rest. This significantly makes your opponent's hand very small, and then they have to really choose wisely which cards they use to defend, but also keep essentially to deal with certain skills such as Mizukaze. You can pair it up with a Restander as well and the Mizukaze to make it really hard for your opponent to guard everything. It can mean the difference between six damage as well. There's also the original Mukuro as well. Sometimes you're not able to discard a, a Demon Self Shirinuri Dragon Shirinui as the cost to stride. So you can generically stride into this though and have a very similar effect or turn to generate advantage, but also just have a mid game play. The G Guard Gero Hoakan can dominate essentially a grade one on your opponent's side of the field during their battle phase, which is key. Sometimes this actually can ruin an opponent's turn. It's not as flexible compared to other disruptive plays, but it's something that we can use whenever it comes up. I want to mention three general guidelines to help you with playing Numatama in general. First one, just be deliberate on your calls. Numatama is able to draw some advantage, but not a lot. And so you have to be very deliberate with your combo pieces because once you use them, you can pretty much lose them. The only cards that get around this are such as like using Forbidal, which actually is able to revive your grade threes later on when you see Forbidal. Number two, practice multiple scenarios. Nubatama is a very situational clan, which doesn't make it bad, but it really forces a player to play as many different type of matchups and scenarios. So that way, inherently, you know which stride to go into. So it does come with practice and effort and patience. So definitely do your due diligence to practice multiple scenarios. And lastly, number three, sometimes you just still wins. There are cards with the guard restriction and of course, sometimes just making it hard to guard with dominated attacks. All of a sudden, your opponent can easily go from two to three to four, five, six pretty easily in one single turn, just depending on what resources they have. Even opponents that generate a lot of hand too, thanks to cards like Sukuma Orokan, you can easily just reduce that to four cards and then have a power play to actually deal the six damage. So really practice those scenarios and take advantage of those free wins, essentially. Not to mention the decks also decked in over time as well. So you're more likely to see triggers on your drive checks and also your damage checks. In the description, I'll have deck profiles that you can check out as well. Over time, I will update that description too for the latest deck profiles for standard and premium as well. So be on the lookout and I also link other YouTubers who are also passionate about Nubatama. Definitely check them out. 
And if you're gonna get cards too, and if you want to support the channel too, use the affiliate links mentioned before here to get singles. You could also get your swag, such as like the Naruto Sage Mode deck box from Dooley Guard as well, and also playmats if you want to go full ninja. And if you want more guidance on a one-on-one -on -one setting, feel free to book a Metify session. Happy to help out where I can and can help speed up the process of ramping up to Nubatama. If this video gave you some value, please leave a like, comment some suggestions too, and tips for Nubatama players in the pin thread as well. And share it with a fellow amigo that's interested in the clan or would like to learn how to face it or even just veterans or fans of the clan. And lastly, subscribe and hit the bell for instant notifications for future content. Until next time, amigos. Bye.